Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. And uh, today's video, though it may seem repetitive, um, it is actually a different video. Um, I haven't made this yet. I've been making a lot of these why this upcoming, why this indicator, why this, you know, why this, why that means a cold and snowy winter because as I, uh, the previous video I made uh, that was uh, talking anything of the sort was why this upcoming pattern change sets the stage for a cold fall. This time around, it's why this upcoming ch pattern change indicates or set the stage. I just decided to change it up. It indicates a cold and snowy winter. So um, the upcoming pattern change, I will first explain to you what it is and how you know, and then I'll explain how it impacts the winter. And this is obviously for the winter 2019-2020. Before we get further into this video. I would really ask you guys to consider subscribing. It's a red subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, all you got to do is click the button and you are subscribed. Um, it helps this channel grow. We spread uh, news about the weather. We educate people about the weather. And it is as unbiased as I can get it to be. Um, you know, beside, I'm trying to be 100% non-biased. Maybe the sources I'm using can be a bit biased. But um, usually they're you know, they claim to be raw data. So I'm not, you know, I don't base this off of any news source, any media outlet, because I've been looking at my uh, local, uh, there's many Chicagoans that watch here, and uh, WGN News, I, I was, it's my local office, weather office, uh, for, it's basically a news station, and they are exaggerating the warmth for July so bad, and they're expecting, they're expecting the August to be nice and warm, and not cool, and even the Climate Prediction Center and NOAA's showing a cool August, so they are just so biased. It, it, it's such cringe. Um, they're showing uh, uh, July being 4 degrees above average for Chicago, and it was 1.5 degrees based on the NOAA's uh, composite anomalies. So, at this point, I'm going to go with NOAA because I don't like believing news stations. They change that data so horrendously, it just gets makes my blood boil. Sorry about that ranch, but I just was looking at it right before making this video. Anyways, uh, this is what the um, the models are showing uh, for about the mid portion. Uh, yeah, next weekend. Uh, this is Saturday, and around next Saturday, next Sunday, Monday, they're showing. Uh, this is the European model. Uh, and... Uh, it doesn't say on here the European model because it's a screenshot, I cut it off, but trust me, this is a European model. And this is for, I think, 220 hours out as of the um, as of the midnight run of Friday, or the Saturday one. And you can see that if I were to draw this out right here, here's a ridge, here's a trough, cooler air would be allowed around here. And as well here, but here would be a little bit of warmer air. So that's what the European is showing, and that's what um, they're showing that it would um, occur for most of August. The GFS, if we were to click one slide ahead, showing very, very similar thing. I'm not going to draw it out again, but you could see ridge right there, and a troughing pattern. Cooler weather across the north, a little bit warmer across the south. And look at that. That is a big trough. That is, uh, that's getting down into the 50s right there. The 552 mil uh, millibar thickness line. And uh, let's go to now what the Climate Prediction Center is showing. Because I just wanted to show you the raw models. But I didn't go on tropical tidbits because I don't have to go back on my slide presentation. And it would just be kind of a little bit of messy. So I just decided to take two screenshots. So um, hopefully that suffices. But you can see that... Uh, this is what the models are showing. This is what the Climate Prediction Center is uh, showing. And you can see right there, cut off 8 to 14 day outlook. Um, you actually can't see it. Let me see if I could extend this. Uh, never mind. Okay, but this is the 8 to 14 day outlook. Don't believe me? Okay, fine. Um, go on to your Google, search it up. As of today, this is the 8 to 14 day outlook. They switch it every day, but this is as of the 3rd of August, the 8 to 14 day outlook. You could see below average conditions across much of the northern and eastern portion of the country. You could see the south, extreme south, parts of Texas, and the west is getting warmer temperatures. And notice how Alaska is as well warm because of this huge... Um, warming pattern across uh, the Gulf uh, of Alaska, and this is sending this chill down into the U.S. into August, and they're basically expecting this next week to be on the mediocre side, nothing too hot. No, I wouldn't even say above average for most portions. I would just say around average, neutral, but then it dives down into a pretty chilly pattern, um, uh, pretty, uh, pretty chilly at the very least. 
and you can see that uh, this one is only 8 to 14 outlook, so I think it extends through the 20th of August. But the three to four week outlook, which is from the uh, which is from the 20th through the 31st, is showing also below average conditions. So this is a pattern here to stay. How does this pattern even uh, affect? You know, how does this pattern affect winter? What am I talking about? And how do I? How do I know this? How do I uh, apply this? How do I, you know, figure this out? So basically what I did, it's a very simple concept and I've been doing this on many of my previous videos. So what I do is take, um, say this August, supposed to be chilly, supposed to be rather on the cool side. Um, we look at, uh, all, and then I go to this thing, I could send you the link if you want, I'll just leave it, I've been sending the links to many people that have been asking for it, and you can see that it's asking about the, or this is the, sea, or the surface air composite anomaly 1981 through 1910 average, based on the 1981 through 1910 average, and you can see that, um, looking at this, there's a big dome of cooler air across the eastern US, and a good chunk of the country, so basically what I did was, Find similar Augusts to what is forecasted to be this August. So this August is forecasted to be, as I showed you, pretty chilly, pretty cool, um, and pretty dry. So I found similar Augusts, 2014, 2013, 2009, uh, 2004, 2000, uh, 1997, 2003, and all these Augusts had a chill in common. So you may be looking at this and being like, but that's a huge anomaly. That's way too chilly. Um, well... I think this August has a good chance of being this chilly, first of all. Second of all, look at the increments. They're much smaller because it's based over several years. Second of all, um, this would be um, a little bit over-exaggerated, uh, the coldness, because this is just end cold August compiled on another cold August, compiled on another cold August, compiled on another... So, you know, you get the point. It's still relatively accurate, though, because... Uh, I've been looking at this, uh, I've been doing this for several years, and what I've been forecasting has been becoming fairly right and accurate. So basically what I do is, again, took all these cold Augusts, what is forecasted to be this August, and looked at the winter months of those years. So again, look at that, December 24. All those years are the same ones that had the cold August. The December, you can see, was fairly chilly, nothing too terribly cold, though. But notice how there's not a single area in the U.S. I mean, not a single area above average gets close over here in california not a single above average many locations neutral but many locations um also being chilly obviously getting f chillier as you go further north now let's look at the january um portion of the winter like we're at uh, of the, all these years so the year will go ahead because the new year starts at january 1st so obviously it's a year ahead now 2015 2014 2010 instead of 2013 or instead of 2014 2013 2009 you could see the chill is even more starting to become impressive and the reason for that is if we were to look at the December pattern, it's uh, it was more of a just kind of like a general broad couple of cool shots of air coming in. The January one, there are some bigger contrasts. Look how uh, there is look how there is a warming right here, and that is basically indicating that the jet stream has no other way but to go around it. And then here's a cold wave that comes down, like almost a polar vortex. Look at that right there, and you can see that that basically um, sends chillier air all the way down into the US and when you see these contrasts whenever you have a polar vortex or very chilly conditions in arctic blast like this you usually see um, a contrast with the west so usually the west is warm while the east is cold and that's why if we look back at December um, it wasn't there was it wasn't as cold, but there also wasn't as big of a contrast in the west It was just kind of more of a slobby pattern. This one is more of a meteorological pattern where it's Where it's basically, you know, all the meteorologic Meteorological fanatics know what this is. This is basically a negative NAO and this leads to a big um, You know blocking and Greenland and the Gulf of Alaska and this just sends a cold air down also, this is what February looked like. You could see um, still very east and south oriented, the cold air definitely there. And some of these anomalies are still pretty great. You could see negative, um, up to negative one degree um, in difference in Celsius. And you may be wondering, that's not a lot, but it's over a course of several years. So that actually equivalents to quite a bit of chilly air.
and I do think that this year will be similar to um this fact um this uh this map because not only um the, I mean this video is only based on why this upcoming pattern change is showing a cold winter just based off this but there are many other indications that I used using analogs um that are showing a cold winter like the wet and cooled spring we had that is also showing of those year all those years that are cooling wet springs like this year I had fairly snowy winters and that's what we're looking at right now um all the years that had pretty chilly julys or uh, junes have had a pretty chilly and snowy winter and you can see that this is yet another factor that is po possibly showing at a chilly uh, period of time across or across uh, the u.s so very interesting very unique and it's just fascinating i mean th this has been uh, really indicating all the signs I've been indicating toward a pretty chilly winter, guys. And if you look at the whole winter averaged out, you could see it was pretty darn cold for much of the country of all these years. I don't, you know, I'm not sure if the, this year will be exactly like this. I do think, though, there will be a tendency for cold air to break down from this from the north, obviously, and break um, down into uh, the breakdown into the central plains. I think the polar vortex will come across several times, and I do think that the south may see some snow this year, um, or more than last year, and, you know, not record-breaking amounts, but I do think they will see some snow. Um, possibly some records, I don't know, you know, those southern snowstorms, you could get one big one and you could break a record for a certain city, like we had a couple years ago, I think it was 2015, um, 2014, actually, they're both on here these years. We had a couple of winter storms in the southeast that brought snow in Savannah, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, northern sections of Georgia. Georgia, Alabama, New Orleans, I mean, it was snowy down there, which uh, is not rare, and, uh, but, you know, it could break a record if it's a big storm. This is uh, December through February of all the years, but in terms of precipitation, you could see that, especially across the Northeast, it's been very wet, um, and you could see that this doesn't necessarily mean it was snowy, because it's just precip, so it could have fallen as rain, but if it's cold with above average precip, you usually could indicate using your brain that it is going to be pretty snowy across these areas. The rest of this country, um, I'm not saying it's going to be below average because um, because if you, um, if you think about it, it doesn't have to be a lot of, uh, you know, precip above average. It could be below normal precip, but it could be above average snowfall because some precip always falls at rain. So um, as long as it's cold and there's some precip, you could be above average. Um, so that's basically it for today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching. It was a little bit of a long one But um, consider subscribing consider liking the video and I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye